Hello and welcome to the video lecture series brought to you by St. Andrews Institute of Technology and Management. Uh, my name is Ravinder. I am an assistant professor with ETC department and the subject we are talking about uh, talking here is Object Technologies and Programming in Java that is OTPNP. Uh, now uh, today I am going to start uh, with a new topic called introduction to the programming paradigms okay this is just an overview of what kind of programming types or uh, the programming thinking that has been developed over the years uh, how many types of those thinkings are uh, ahead of us and which one of them are implemented by which of those uh, coding languages and which are the most popular ones nowadays so we're going to see them in, in the coming lecture in the coming few minutes so let's head back to the slide okay so today's topic is programming paradigms okay now according to its definition a paradigm can be termed as a method to solve some problems or to do some task Okay. Now, programming paradigm is an approach to solve problem using some programming or coding language like Java, C or any other. And also, we can say it is a method or we can also say it is a method to solve a problem using tool set techniques that are available to us following some approach. So, this is what I am talking about a few seconds ago that uh, the meaning of programming or coding paradigms is that how many different flows or types of coding thinking or programming thinking uh, has been developed over the years and which of those are quite popular nowadays or which of those suits the kind of kind of domain in computer science okay so we are going to talk about that okay now there are lots of coding languages that are known but all of them need to follow some kind of strategy when they are implemented uh, when they are implementing and this uh, strategy or you can say the kind of strategy they implement uh, is actually the paradigm itself now apart from the varieties of coding languages there are lots of paradigms to fulfill each and every kind of demand so as i've told you a few seconds ago uh, these paradigms do not exist as competition to each other although some of them do exist as competition to each other but yes each and every paradigm fills some kind of spot in the computer science domain or or uh, in any field of coding domain as you may say and uh, every uh, type of paradigm domain or sorry every type of paradigm has has been developed by keeping in keeping in view uh, some specific domain that has been left out or uh, has been left out over the years by all the other domains okay so it is not vague to say that uh, okay uh, this this particular paradigm is is great to learn and we will not learn or we will not go through any other paradigm yes some of them are uh, competition to each other but mostly are developed over the years keeping in mind that yes uh, uh yes this kind of uh, particularly this kind of strategy to, to tackle a problem or to write some code is going to fulfill uh the uh the short shortcomings that we encountered while defining or while coding for a particular domain of computer science okay so let's move ahead i think we are done with the definition called paradigms of programming or coding so we have two types of programming paradigms in computer science domain uh, that is broadly two types now these two types have some other types also the first one is imperative programming paradigm and the next one is declarative programming paradigm so first let's talk about this imperative programming paradigm now it is one of the oldest programming paradigms now its features close relations relation to machine architecture uh, it is based on von neumann architecture you must be familiar with the von neumann architectures 
Uh, if not, you can Google it and look out for it. Uh, it works by changing the state of the code or application through assignment statements. Okay, so states means the the present values of some some particular uh, variables or some uh, let's say the intermediate results and these states are actually changed by assigning some new values to it and as the new values came into uh, effect those values actually changes the whole scenario or i would say actually changes the flow of the uh, complete application okay now it performs step by step task by changing its states so the main focus is is on how to achieve the goal the paradigm consists of several statements and after execution of all the results uh, that are being stored okay uh, now uh, let's uh, list some of the advantages of the imperative programming paradigm now, one of them is very effective that is very simple to implement and now imperative programming concept or uh, imperative programming paradigm is actually quite simple to implement you must have been familiar with it in your plus two in sub if you are familiar with if you have came across some of the coding languages uh, in your uh, high school syllabus then uh, they must be from the from this particular uh, paradigm that is called imperative programming paradigm so it's it's quite simple to implement uh, like you must like in this particular uh, like in your first year, you must have came across the, the quite a popular language called C. That is the basic language that has been taught to the uh, graduate uh, students of the graduate schools uh, across the whole country or across the whole world. Uh, that is uh, the, the strategy that we took to uh, actually go through or the strategy that we actually took to code the complete uh, uh, problem solution in the C language actually came under or the, that particular thinking is actually called as imperative programming paradigm. So, so you, you people are already through the uh, imperative programming paradigm. You All of you must have passed your first year, uh, let's say, uh, syllabus called programming in C. So while you are coding in C, maybe you uh, know it or not, by knowingly, unknowingly, you people have actually implemented the programming or imperative programming paradigm itself. Okay. Uh, other advantage is if uh, that it contains loops and variables and all that, 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 that actually makes all these things quite easy. That is, that is actually, these keywords actually makes the uh, implementation of this uh, imperative programming paradigm quite easy actually. Okay, so I will not dwell into that. Now the disadvantage is the complex problem cannot be solved and and less efficient. It could be less efficient and it could be less productive. But nowadays, uh, due to the powerful writing or the powerful libraries that are available to us in this uh, that are used for imperative programming paradigms or they uh, those who tend to implement this programming paradigm uh, imperative programming paradigms. Uh, actually, uh, more complex problems are solved nowadays using this particular approach. Okay, so let's move ahead. Now, a few of the examples could be from this one is your C or Fortran or Fortran and or your basic language that you people have must have gone through in your, uh, let's say, in your high school itself. Let's move ahead. Now, next one is actually let's talk some points about this declarative programming paradigms also. Now, this is a quite different way of thinking while trying to solve a particular problem or while, while writing a particular application in your uh, systems. Now it is divided as logic, functional and database. And in computer science, the declarative programming is a style of building the code that expresses logic of computation without talking about it, its control flow. Okay, So it often considers the code as theories of some logic. 
you may simplify writing parallel code or it may simplify itself by writing some parallel codes the focus is on what needs to be done rather than how it should be done basically emphasizes on what code is actually doing okay i think you must have got the point until now it just declares the result we want rather than how it has to be produced okay so it's 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 like you uh, like like someone is saying to you like uh, okay you have to do this i don't know how you are going to manage that but you have to give me some results on it so so this is the clear thinking of declarative programming paradigms okay now this is the only difference between now the only difference between the imperative and declarative programming paradigms is in imperative it is like how you are going to do something and in declarative what you are going to do actually so getting into deeper we'll see those logic functional and databases uh, declarative programming paradigms so these are the, th the three types of declarative programming paradigms that are available to us so let's move ahead now we have three types of imperative programming paradigms that are available to us i'm going to discuss in small on a small scale about each one of them the first one is procedural programming and that is actually a type of imperative programming paradigm now this particular paradigm that is procedural programming paradigm emphasizes on procedure in terms of underlying machine model now there is no difference in between procedural and imperative approach it has ability to reuse the code and is this is actually its main advantage and it was boom at the times uh, when it, it it was going to use for a very large problems and that is the main strength of this procedural programming that uh, it is highly reusable so in c that you you must have seen those functions or the library functions that you people are using again and again and again and again it's it uh, those functions actually make your life quite easier so if you're writing a, a code of 100 lines or 200 lines let's say 500 lines and you must have encountered the the lines uh, such as or the uh, the the function such as the printf scanf uh, hundreds of time in, in thousand lines of codes so those functions are called again and again and again and again and you actually don't know what is the actual uh, co what is the actual syntax that is been written inside that particular function that is printf or scanf so uh, you are just using it uh, it has been written once and stored inside the library for for reuse for its reusability and now you can use them again and again and again and it is going to make your life quite simple one very great example of this kind of programming uh, paradigm or uh, the language that implements is is c language as we have discussed okay so let's move ahead let's move ahead to the object oriented programming and this is the actually this is the actual paradigm that we are going to discuss in this subject uh, throughout the four minutes in this particular uh, approach the program is written or your code is written as a collection of classes and object which are meant for communication with each other the smallest and basic entity is an object and all kinds of computations is performed on the objects only and more emphasis is, emphasis is on the data rather than the procedure so it can handle almost all kind of real life problems which are today exists okay so the advantages it brings to the table are the data security the inheritance the code reusability the flexibility and the abstraction all these words will make sense when we dive deep into this subject uh unit wise or the topic wise all those uh Uh, all those what can i say these words that i have just told you like inheritance and abstractions and classes and objects will make great sense to you when i'm going to discuss in detail in the coming lecture what is the object oriented methodology itself okay now one great example of this is and still used at at a very large scale is your java language okay 
very first language that has used this kind of object oriented programming paradigm is simula and the main one that is being used on a very large places nowadays is java your c++ your .net your sometimes your python could be used for this uh, your visual basic and some others okay so let's move ahead now the last one is your parallel processing approach now this is the approach in which the processing of code instructions is actually uh, processed by dividing them among multiple processes a parallel processing system poses many number of uh, uh, possess a many number of processors with the objective of running a code in less time by dividing them among the hardware relay now this approach seems to be like divide and conquer a classic example of uh, this particular approach is again your C and C++ which supports uh, this parallel processing for some of its libraries only. Not, not every other code written in C and C++ actually use parallel processing but some of these like, like especially like if you are dealing with some graphics then graphics are nowadays handled by uh, separate uh, GPUs and all the other functionalities that is uh, all the other functions are actually handled by your uh, CPUs. Okay, so that is an example. These three are the actual, actually the types of your imperative programming paradigms. Let's move ahead. Now we are up to the uh, declarative programming paradigm. We have already discussed this. It's uh, what can I say? I have already discussed its. Uh, it's a definition so let's move ahead to its types the first one is your logic programming paradigm now it can be termed as an abstract model of computation that is it will solve logical problems like puzzles or series in logical programming we have a knowledge base which we know before and along with the questions and knowledge base which is given to machines it produces some kind of results so in normal programming languages, such concept of knowledge base is not available. But while using the concept of artificial intelligence and machine learning, we have some models like perceptron model, kind of a deep learning model, which is used, uh, which is actually using use the uh, same logical programming model uh, or paradigm. So in logical coding, the main emphasis is on the knowledge base and the problem itself. The execution of the code is very much like proof of mathematical statements. So one such example is your Prolog coding language used by your friends at, in the Department of uh, Electronics and Communication and uh, Electrical. And maybe some of you have been familiar with this Prolog. It has been mostly used by uh, for interacting with the electronic hardware. Okay. Now, next one is your functional coding paradigm or programming paradigm. The functional programming paradigm has its roots in mathematics and it is language independent. The key principle of this paradigm is the execution of series of mathematical functions. The central model for the abstraction is the function which are meant for some specific computations actually and not the data structure itself. I think you people are familiar with data structures until now. You, you people must have read the advanced and the basic data structures. Now data are loosely coupled to functions because every kind of advanced data has some kind of functions defined only for them like for for uh, let's say some kind of sorting algorithm, some kind of reversing algorithm that are being defined only for those particular uh, to be handled out by uh, to be used on those kind of particular data structures. The functions hide their implementation actually and functions can be replaced with their values without changing the meaning of the code. So this kind of coding uh, let's say programming paradigm is called functional programming paradigm and a very famous type of language or very famous uh, computing language that is in implementing it to quite a success is your JavaScript. And Scala. Okay. Now JavaScript is actually 
the backbone of your complete web and it is actually a functional programming language so every one of you which has been some uh, let's say encounter with your web technology must have seen the javascript and if they have seen the javascript and done some work in it so they must be familiar with the functional approach that it applies and your last one is your database driven programming approach now this methodology is based on data and its movement a program statement are defined by data rather than the hard coding a series of steps a database program is heart of business information system provide files creation data entry update query reporting functions now these are there are several of coding languages that are developed mostly for database applications for example the most famous one is still quite not quite but actually the king of this particular field is uh, sql it is applied to streams of structures data for filtering transforming aggregating or calling other systems so this kind of paradigm has known its own wide application okay so you must be familiar with uh, your uh, sql and some other types of database languages until now you must have worked in your own fine way you must have worked on, on some of them until now so uh, okay i will end this lecture here now so this is all i have to say about your programming paradigms tomorrow we are going to talk about what is the object oriented methodology okay and after that we are going to dive uh, dive deep into this object oriented methodology and we are going to pick a language called java uh, to solve the problems by implementing the paradigm of object orientation and we'll see how real world applications could be solved by our this strategy thank you